Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome back to episode 76 of the Agile Podcast. My name is Paul Goddard, and we'd like to firstly say thank you to all the people that donated money to our charity, Single, this Christmas. It was a real success, and we've donated altogether £438 that's going straight towards the Shelter charity this year, so thank you very much for that. Also need to welcome some new patrons to our following, Wayne and Theodorus. Um, So welcome to you guys. Thank you very much for joining us. This podcast is back in Bristol at a pub called The Bay Horse, where we met up with Nigel. And we just visited an amusement arcade. And that, of course, sparked some conversation. And also a new competition for you to enter. So stay tuned for that a bit later on. Anyway, Happy New Year once again. And let's get cracking with the first podcast of 2020. Play the jingle. Cheers, everybody. Are we on? Should be live. Should be, yeah. Not well, live. Not live, live, but we're, we're on the air. Fantastic. I'm so excited. Mm-hmm. In the Bay Horse. Bay Horse? Yes, the Bay Horse pub. Bristol. 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 Um, one of Bristol's finest drinking establishments. Is it? If you rule out all the others. <laughs> <laughs> any, any history in that? Yes, I had my leaving drinks here when I left my first student job working in Dixon's. <laughs> so that was back in the where, where, point, mid-90s. Point to out the window, where was Dixon's? Dixon's, oh, you can't see it from here. It was where um, shops are now. Yes, so uh, opposite the new bar. Okay. It was with Dixon's. So I, I quit Very on good. Christmas. Happy times? I, I, no, no, I quit on Christmas Eve. Why? Christmas Why Eve. did you quit? Because I didn't want to work at Christmas. So I thought I'm walking. Oh. Oh. <laughs> No, um, okay. £2.80 an hour, I think, or maybe £2.18 wow. an hour. Maybe £2.18 an hour. Happy times. Mm. What are you drinking, boys? It looks quite fruity. Yes. <laughs> so, I think the readers, deserve to, readers listeners, yeah. deserve to know that Jeff has stitched Paul and I right up. We send Jeff to the bar, and he comes back with us. I am on the Paul's favourite drink, Brothers Rhubarb and Custard English Cider. And it is as sweet as Paul said it was. Yeah. The last podcast. I don't think it was actually the same. What um, different company. <laughs> Sorry. The same but genre. Same flavour. This is incredibly sweet. And I'm drinking um, from the same company, Brothers. The same uh, brewery. Brewery, if I can say it. Um, what are you drinking? Palmer Violet flavour cider. <laughs> Wow. Mm, Those nice. are the little violet sweets you used yeah, to get. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Obviously, as you can expect, it's mega sweet. Um, it's right up my alley. Sophie Woodcock used to sit next to me. She made Palmer Violet vodka when we were at VT. She just put Palmer Violets it, into it in, nice. in work. Not, at, not in the office, but okay. in her spare time. And Wouldn't refresh her favourite vodka. And sort of Hello, Sophie, if you're listening. Hello, Sophie. Well, uh, I'm drinking Dead Pony Club. Well. Cheers. What's that? What's that all about? Not very sweet, thankfully. Right. It's from Brewdog. Oh, okay. Are they Bristol based? They yeah, they are, are they? I they got space here. in Bristol. They may have started there, I'm not sure. But they're nice. It's quite, I think it's only about 3.5% or something. Pretty good. Mild. Yeah. But good for an early afternoon for a taxing. Exercise. We're yes. about, yeah, for the listeners, we're about to head off. Short. This will be a short day for a mental a, challenge. A puzzle, a, a escape room, mm. stroke puzzle room booked. We're locked in a room, see if we can get out. But Nigel's on our way office. here, we happen to walk past a kids' arcade, which grabbed Nigel and Paul's attention because they are big kids. And, and Jeff wants his attention. I got dragged in. <laughs> and uh, it's one of those where you pay ridiculous amounts of money to play games to win tickets that. You could win prizes with it, you could have bought for a fraction of the price if you yeah. bought tickets. Something my kids love to do and I hate because why not just buy the things in the first place? Oh, yeah. <coughs> but bar fun humbug. sponge. Bar humbug. I turned up and I won the basketball and I won the bowling and so there we go. We won some prizes. 
Which I'll, I'll explain give to away. what the prizes are. So these are um, some of you who might be of a certain age, like me. Um, I used to get um, my parents would buy me these basically, I think, to, to keep me quiet when I was a kid. Yeah. So these are um, what they're kind of polystyrene, cheap foam-based flying gliders, flying yeah. planes that you kind of assemble. They're in a sort of kind of a very um, thin packet. Um, and there's, we've got a couple of different models here. They're normally World War II themed, aren't they? Yeah, so these are jet fighter flying gliders. You make them, um, and then you can throw them around the office if that's what you are. And we're going to give these away, aren't we? Mm -hmm. I just realised something about this. They're called jet fighters flying gliders. None of them are jets. Looking at the back, I, I'm pretty sure none of them are jets. Yeah, so we've got They're two. All, all pelicans. Despite have we got five here to, to give away, but we've only actually got two different types of planes. <laughs> So we've been kind of a, a little bit shortchanged there, but um, yeah. So you can win this by answering the question, and the five closest answers will win a plane. But if only one of the person answers, you get all five. Bit of a bit of fun for Christmas. Exactly. So the question's coming later in the. Is it? Is it? Yes. Right, 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 you have to listen to the end. Ooh. Yeah, I've got the end. Ooh, the sneaky. Mm, sneaky. Yeah. Spoiler. Now, but what made me interested about that arcade? Mm. We were talking about this earlier on is how it's gamification. You were saying how it's so much cheaper just to buy these toys mm -hmm. rather than play these games. Yet Paul and I, and someone else, uh, were very involved with it and mm -hmm. thoroughly enjoyed it and had a good time generating that meagre return yeah. um, because of the gamification of the process. Now, we hear a lot about gamification in adult, in, in work in general. How do you feel about it? I'm all for it, in a way. Because it doesn't cost money. Yeah. Well, maybe it does. But no, you get more. You get more for it. Whereas there, I don't. Know. I think I'd probably prefer. To, I think it's a business model, but I don't mind. Like. I think I'd prefer to pay a figure for an amount of time rather than. I, I am the Scrooge in my family. My family love going to those things, and I hate it. So you think the puzzle room idea where you pay for a certain period of time mm. to complete challenges. Yeah. So the sort of the time and materials gamification is more pleasant to you than the sort of the bonus led or objective led model. Do you know what I think actually it's the prizes that bug me. I don't think I'd be as annoyed if there were no prizes at the end of it. Well what you so you just get eliminate the tickets altogether. Yeah. That that I hadn't thought of that. But so, yeah, I think the prizes are I, I think that, I think those places were far more effective. The prizes were good. I don't mean good as in cost. I mean good as in just some thought had gone into them. Mm. Like we had to scrabble. Those planes are quite good, he says, embarrassingly. <laughs> but we had to scrabble around for those. Some of the other prizes were truly um, poor, both financially and as an item you would ever want quality. I think if they were a few good things, it would be far more interesting. But to a child, those prizes are. Oh, so you're you're not that. you're not their target market. Well, well, you might be the parent of the target market. I'm the customer, I'm not the user. Yes, <laughs> you're yeah, you're but paying in the office. To a child, and my boy, my my eight year old would love something like that. If he feels he's won that, whether it's the, the fact that it hasn't cost it's cost me yeah, yeah. six yeah. quid, <laughs> whatever it is, to get something like that, he thinks that that's. A, a great prize. But here's something that's interesting. I didn't realise they were tickets until they started pumping up the machine after the first game. No. We were playing just to compete, okay. if you remember. It was the competition aspect that yeah. was the fun for us. And I, we I, I we enjoyed challenged. that more without the tickets and the prizes. Mm. Yeah, just the competition Even aspect. though I'm supposedly getting more from it, mm. yeah. it's, it reduced my experience. So, but I'm not been targeted. So I remember, in, mm. I'm going to do a work related thing, but carry on. No, no, carry on. So I remember something in Nokia um, when I joined, to try and take it back to some kind of work uh, context here. When I joined, they were in, in the process, in the middle of a fairly um, intense release, a, a, a project, a change that they were trying to do. Okay. And uh, when I got there, there was an element of gamification that was starting to be ridiculed because it was, became, it became meaningless. And it was, they gave it a word, they called it kudos. Mm. Right? So you, it was basically like a reward, you gained kudos yeah. Or um, going the extra mile, putting in the extra yeah. effort, whatever it was. And teams game kudos and individuals game kudos. And I think it was some kind of 
it was monetary in the sense that you got vouchers maybe for yeah. Pizza Express yeah. or pizza or something. So, it was, but it became in Nokia at the time. It became it had the opposite effect. It was ridiculed because it doesn't mean anything. To me. I don't even want it, and, and it became something that became a bit of a standing joke. The tickets, in a sense, became quite destructive. Mm. You think it was infantilizing the staff, making a child yeah, child, yeah. Child and I think it was. Um, it wasn't necessarily rewarding right behaviours either. So okay. just by giving people who were putting extra effort in money or treats. Um, so, so we had fun uh, competing. Do you think that's an aspect that should be brought more to work? Or do well, that can, that can go both ways. I think. I think. I think it can raise the bar uh, in terms of, um, but I think it can potentially divide larger teams of teams that, that then start to treat themselves as quite defensively that we, we can't, we're not like them or you know, we, we, we don't want to do it like they're, like they're doing it, we're different. For me the competition side of things works if everyone believes they're capable of winning. So if one team thinks they can't win because they've got an inferior yeah. environment, inferior team, inferior product or whatever, then they, they feel like nothing they do will be good enough, yeah. and so why bother competing in the first place? They just yeah. check out. But I think, but I, I was going to say, competition is something that, and I see it even now in training classes that I do, even when I tell people not to compete, they still compete. Yeah. As soon as you introduce any, any element of sub teams yeah. or a, a, the same problem across two tables, it becomes a, a contest. It's the trouble that when you create an us, you create a them. Yeah, of course. You do. Yeah, so it's the motivating thing. Yeah. The trouble um, is how. If it's done healthy, if it, it can be done healthy. But one thing I notice around competition, I think that's probably for me the bigger thing is competition against yourself. Yeah. So the best teams I've seen, they will enjoy beating their personal best rather than worrying about what anyone else is doing. They will just try and constantly raise their own bar. Is, is that like golf with your handicap? Yeah. Where you're competing against really golf. I know you play against other people, really you compete against yourself. Well, you beat, yeah, against golf. the course. Yeah. The golf, course. golf is a very solo sport, isn't it? Yeah. But so so it's almost, yeah, competing against the entire yeah. The sprinters, they'll, they'll, yeah. they'll try and beat their best at the time. The high jumpers, you know, yeah. whatever happens, whatever happens. They can't control what the other people are doing. Yeah. So there's no point. So what, was, sorry, what about hot housing? Do you remember that back in British Telecom yeah, yeah. a decade ago now? But that was using competition, wasn't it, to get to a short-term end goal? I, I know we spoke yeah. about it before in this thing, but how do you feel generally about that? Like positive, Mixed. negative? I, I think my, my experience at the time was fine. I remember ridiculing the idea. Yeah. But at the time, I think it was done in a fun and healthy way. There was no sabotaging, there was no bad feeling about losing. Yeah, everyone was in there applauding the, the winning idea. And I think it, that kind of competition can drive innovation, it can drive creativity. We've got motivated. Hot housing itself in BT had a, tended to have a very negative um, the negative feedback, largely because of the intensity of it. It was, yeah. it was, for a company like BT, it was a radically different way of working. And I think that's the thing. I think if you went in now, it yeah, wouldn't be brilliant. It wouldn't be. No. No. It was just such a big leap from Massive where they leap. were. Yeah. Very comfortable distance. Mm. Deliver something every couple of years. Maybe. Yeah. And even, you look at BT, they didn't really have, they weren't in a competitive market. No, it's still, it's not very comfortable. Very much, very much, and people, even people, employees, didn't see them, kind of see themselves as everyone gets along, everyone's kind of, yeah. we're all in this together. We're a public utility. Exactly, and we can't, so we don't have a competition, so the element of being competitive wasn't perhaps as yeah. abundant as it yeah. is now. Much more of a competitive market these days. Yeah, I think in fact even competition or that sort of um, style would have been looked down upon. Actually, it would have even been not um, rewarded. It would have been actually rather um, negatively thought about. If you think about someone like uh, some of our previous bosses, if you had someone who's being actually competitive, I think someone like Dennis or Sean or mm. people like that would have been a little bit um, dismissive. Mm. I'm sure that's the right word, but they would have been very yeah. Watch yourself there. You know? Yeah, yeah. You look at the, perhaps the extreme there of sales. Teams yeah. who are 
competing against each other to win, and the winner's the best, and if you don't, then you lose. Yeah. Or the, the, maybe your wife working for a company that, that, at the end of every year, the lowest performer would not get renewed, or something yeah. like that. Well, he's going to get cut. Yeah. But he's fired anyone that wasn't up to a certain standard. Yeah. Which I don't think is a good thing. Yes. Yeah, it's, um, it's one of the reasons I don't like The Apprentice TV show. Yeah. It's just, it just encourages all the wrong kind of behaviour. It's less showbiz, isn't it? It's like Big Brother. When they first did Big Brother, they thought, we'll get some interesting people together and see what happens. Then they realised what they want to do is put very weird, dangerous, malfunctional people together to get car crashes, which makes great TV. Same with Apprentice. Nearly everyone in The Apprentice you wouldn't hire or you would be very nervous about because they've got issues. But that's what they really on TV, makes great TV. Trouble is, like with um, Trump in America, good TV means bad policy. Mm. Right. No politics, nice. Politics is fine. This is a politics free podcast. Yeah. So, so it's 2020. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have clear vision? What's your New Year's resolution? <laughs> um, I, I think I sort of gave before. up on it, really. My, my my 2020 outlook is to get out and see more conferences. Have you got a number on it? No, not yet. I didn't give you a number. Four. That's my target, is it? Yeah. How you you many did you go to last year, 2019? No. No. I don't think I did a single one. Which, Which is the first for me you know, in 12 months. Okay. But I've told you before, because 2018 London wore me out, so I, I, I have a bit of a self-inflicted... Do you think four is a, is a good number? I'd probably like to do more than that, really. But if I had the time... You have the time. Yeah, if, I have, have the, if I have the... You prioritise the nation. Yeah, that's the thing. I think my 2018 was fairly busy. 2019. No, 2018. Okay. It's fairly busy in conferences. I think I did, like, Agile Kimri and um, Ali, I think, and... Uh, the American one, whatever it was, and the European Austin, gathering. Yeah, before yeah, that, that was 2019, 2018 oh, was um, Minneapolis and it, yeah. London. I spoke about those. And I do four speaking sessions. When I got past London, I was mm. like, oh, okay, now I'm a bit dry. Yeah. <laughs> and so I took Austin off and it started warming up again towards Vienna and then yeah. last year. So for me, um, I'm feeling back on that horse a bit. I know what those ideas and I want to talk about. So I'm hoping to do, hopefully, the two gatherings. Well, definitely the two gatherings. Mm. Maybe Agile 2020, maybe. I may apply again and fail again, so I don't know. Mm. And, um, <laughs> uh, do, we, yeah. do we know where the, the European one is? Lisbon. Lisbon, what's it? Yeah. Yeah. Quite nice mm. this year. <laughs> it's always hard, that, that these first couple of weeks of January, isn't it? Getting used to writing <laughs> in a checkbook. A checkbook? I looked for my checkbook just the other day. I thought I'd have a useful check. Really? I didn't even find it. I didn't know what it was. I, was like, I, I can't really honestly remember the last time I wrote a check. It's been a long time, isn't it? Really? So, uh, hey, news resolutions. Mine's to get more weight. I'm half a stone down Yeah. 2019. So hopefully 2020 I'll carry on that progress. Do you, you have a number? A number uh, I have a number to get to, which I'm not sure. You Obviously, velocity is an internal number, not an external number. <laughs> um, but I've got an idea I want to get there. Velocity is the pace, though. I know. Well, um, so I put it this way. I've got an idea of the pace. I've got an idea of the outcome. Um, I will share the, you know, the output. I will not share the outcome I will share. The outcome would be be thinner. Mm. The output would be weight loss, which I'm not going to share the exact numbers. And the um, process would be velocity, which is how much weight you're losing per spin, or maybe the type of calories you have each day. Mm. Anyway, let's not talk about that. As I get to uh, New York, I'll be the fastest I've ever been. It'll be quite embarrassing. Right? No, I was, I was kind of hoping that I would have Team Mastery at the end of the month. But end of January. End of January, yeah. That's, that's not going right. to happen. No, I don't think so, no. Um, we had a couple of. A couple of hiccups. Not hiccups really, just we've made conscious choices to improve the quality of the illustrations. So we did some prototypes, we did some estimations, we came up with date because of that, got some feedback and some of the options that we came up with people really liked, so we decided to invest a bit more time in that, which then meant we missed the deadline with the printers, which then leaked into Chinese New Year or whatever or something. So yeah, it'll be a little bit later, but the best things come get to that those over, yeah, yeah. Get, get over the line, that'd be good. No point rushing it, put a lot of effort in, no point rushing it now. Is that 
doesn't bother you then? Because I know, and you've heard this before, and we talk about this a lot in our advanced classes, but you're a precrastinator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I'll like do. to get, get shit done. Yeah. yeah no, does, that, does that bother you? It does. Things that are being delayed. I was working with, I mean, I've, I've had these, this group of collaborators who really helped me, and talking to them about it a while ago, and they said, do you know what, Jeff? I think the person that would be most disappointed out of all of this is you. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And, and I'll put a message out there yeah. to, to the people who pre-ordered it, and they said, generally speaking, that all, the, all the people said it's fine. Mm. Rather wait for something to wait. that'll be better. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a lot better with it as a result of that. But I don't mind like having things. No, I know. I know you do. Yeah. Especially when a lot of the stuff that's left is outside of my control. Yeah, that's the worst, but if you're a bit of a control person, then you will have a certain But no, at least, at least we're looking forward to that. Obviously a bit nervous, but looking forward to it. Is there a, do you want to be brave enough to say a date at this point, or are you going to, going to leave it to TBC? Yeah, I, March, I think, is Thinking about this, um, so change something slightly back to what you said about conferences. You know, I cheekily gave you a four conference number. I was thinking it would be interesting to get some recommendations from people if anybody wants to listen. Yeah. Because I tend to do the gatherings, mm-hmm. I always aspire towards agile. But the other ones I think I'll be interested in, I'll be interested to expand my mind a little bit or expand my options a little bit. Yeah. And you don't know that by talking to the same voices. So if anyone out there's got some suggestions, yeah. that'd be kind of cool. Okay. Tweet me yeah, at the Agile podcast, uh, Nigel E. Baker. That's right. Yeah. And let them know what the best conferences are that you should be looking at yeah. for later this, this year. year yeah, also, too. I wanted to try and get to, for personal development wise, I want to try and get some more product based conferences. That's what I want to try and do. Quite yeah. interesting, then. Yeah. yeah. The things that, see, again, like you said, it's trying to get out my yeah. current level of thinking and my current <laughs> paradigm. Yeah. I think take some inspiration from other areas. Mm. That'd be nice. Hmm. Well, yeah. so, have any predictions for the year? I don't know. I don't know what to say, innit? Well, no, I don't think I have. Yeah, it's, um, I think the world seems to be moving faster than ever, but my own personal sense of self has never been slower. You know, in that I feel very settled with who I am now okay. and now. And so my own personal internal world is quite stable. Mm-hmm. So whilst the world is racing around with Brexit and Trump and politics and money and social media and all this, it, that's all racing around. Mm. Actually, as a human being, I feel like a nice little steady little, you know, little boat floating in that ocean. Okay. So I, I'm sure the world will change a lot, but I'm also quite sure I can handle that. Cool. Mm. I think we've changed a lot, haven't we? Again, I was, we were talking about this, me and the wife were talking about this the other day, is that all the, person, all the personality profiles you did when you first joined BT, all these things. Some, some cross between snake oil and chicken and Yeah, and, and um, we th- it just came up in conversation. So the, she, I think there was one for the kids, and we, we did we did a similar to Myers Briggs and the kids and to see if they came out anything like us. And I did the same test that I did, I think, back in the day in BT. And I come up very, uh, not very different, but subtly different. And I think you do change. I think your outlook changes. Your so it just reminded me that if you just if you always see yourself as that type of personality now the future the future you will probably be very different also it's also self dialogue isn't it like I saw a psycho I come where I saw this maybe in a magazine embarrassing me was something about psychology where if you tell someone something about themselves they start acting like that mm-hmm. so I do like dates or something and the woman will say to the man oh you've got such a great sense of humour and then all the men will start trying to be funnier and <laughs> wittier and, and these you can say to someone who's not funny at all I love his sense of humour and then they, then they put the effort in to try and play up that image that people yeah. have yeah. and so you can self-program yourself so you can't say oh, I'm just a bit quiet and you're always quiet and Yeah. And in fact what you do is just telling yourself that you're quiet mm-hmm. and I also think people confuse status with personality mm-hmm. so for instance you're someone quite quiet because you're new in your job well that's because you're new in the job and feeling you don't know what you're doing, you don't mm. know anyone. Mm. But in fact, as you get more mature, more confident in life, the personality doesn't change, it just re- lets you reveal. I remember you tweeting something a while ago, it was a cartoon, I think, about how so the cartoon, one person was saying to the other person, oh my God, you're such a good public speaker, you must be so lucky to be born. I, I can't do that. Mm. 
So, no, 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 I just practiced a lot. Mm. I said, no, 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 you must have been, it must be a natural thing. Mm. Yeah. Some people are born with that. Mm. Is that right? Does that ring a bell? Uh, I'm not sure, but I would, <laughs> that's a no. But, uh, it could be me, but I'm um, sure I remember yeah, you tweeting something yeah, like that. Because, could be so, but yeah, you have to put practice in. You get better at stuff when you practice. Because we get that. Yeah. yeah. And, and last week we we were doing well. Last week we were doing uh, <laughs> uh, first course of the year, and um, we did some visual <laughs> flip charts. Yeah. And some quite often people will say, you know, oh, I can't draw. I wish yeah. I could draw. And some of that. And Paul and I and you, we're no artists, yes. no. but we did some training, we did some practice, we try and keep it simple and yeah. make something effective. Yeah. But if you tell yourself you can't draw, yeah. then you just won't draw. Yeah. Same kind of thing. People yeah. always ask me about public speaking, so you're so good at you're so good at how did you learn? What course did you take? Have you always been good at it? It's been, I've done no courses, I don't know how I learned, I wasn't that good as a child. Mm-hmm. I just did it, mm-hmm. I just keep doing it, you just find a voice and then you just play that voice. You know? Not. I did find an old VHS cassette in the loft recently, uh, and I did go on some training courses in public speaking. Mm-hmm. And one of them, that VHS, was from a training public speaking training course I did when I was at BT, where they videoed you. Yeah. Yeah. To write a presentation, give the presentation yeah. to the camera. And my God, it was awful. I wanted to throw it away, but I, I did. <laughs> Resist the temptation. We've got to find a way to online. Get it. Digitize and get it online. You've got. To. And get the numbers of views, Jeff. Out. Yeah. Present- I thought actually, I may have done. They film you and then you watch it back. Yes. I may have done that. Actually. I can't remember. That sounds familiar on BBC. Horrendous. One of the most painful experiences in my life. That's the prize we shouldn't give, should have given away rather than the Jeff's video. Jeff's VHS. <clears throat> I'll, leave, I'll leave you in my will. Anyway, we're back to the I've still got my old v, uh, BT videos from all the stuff we were doing on Agile, me listening talking away, heads. talking heads and... Well, I try to, but every time I'm trying to convert it into one of the paid software, well, the video software, the sound doesn't come across. I don't know why, I can play the video, but it won't, it won't um, it import the sound. Oh, I'll sort of, I'm a bit of an expert in communication, was that what, what was it? Communi- there's a few of them like that, yeah, there's a few videos like that. There's also some other talking heads I did about... Um, just about BT and you're young, beautiful, young, young bad, thinning hair rapidly, <laughs> trying to hide it. Anyway, back to our competition. Yeah, what's the question? What so, is the question? I reckon we were in the arcade no more than 15 minutes. Oh, yeah, 15, 15 20, 20 minutes, minutes yeah. 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 So let's say 15 minutes. Uh, we came away with five planes. Oh, not everything. Five and else some we sweets. Oh, we came some sweets. Oh, we didn't five share any of those. Don't disclose it, but we had some sweets. Uh, some, that yeah, we've got to give them the data. So we've got to give them the data. So five planes. Five of these planes. One pack of Love Heart sweets that's going to my two daughters. That's a small pack. And, and, and a refresher that went to Paul's. My stomach. And I, got, I got nothing. I got nothing. You so, walked out in a, in a, in a half. So After the question is, to win those five planes, and those two sweets. How no, not many sweets. Sweets of ours. They get the players. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, no, no. But oh, in yeah. order to get them, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. how many tickets did we have to win? So playing these trade games. In. So the closest five answers will win a glider. Signed, 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 glider. signed, signed by it. Jeff, Paul, and Nigel. All right. So get them in. Tweet your answers to at the Agile Podcast. And it could be a good way to hashtag, start. You've got a hashtag in it. <coughs> Give us, you're going to hashtag. Kind of hashtag. Um, comp, hashtag playing competition. Agile comp. Agile comp. For the win. Yeah. For the win. What was oh. the hashtag? That was nine hashtags. <laughs> For the win. For the win. Yeah. There's five things. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Don't worry about the hashtag. But we, cool. uh, we need to go. So cheers. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Well done. See you soon.